Uh, hey, George, how you doing? I'm good. How about you? Uh, great. Are you excited to be a chief? I'm pumped. I'm pumped. Let's do this. Yeah. Well, I tell you what, we've got a bunch of people here who are excited uh, to have you part of the team. I couldn't be more excited. Let's go. Let's go win. Yeah, that, that's exactly right. Got to get back to the Super Bowl and get another Lombardi. That's exactly what it's all about. What is going on, everybody? And welcome back to yet again another episode of Team Talk. I am going to be your host, as always. My name is Caleb James. Thanks for tuning in. Before we get going today, make sure you like and subscribe the video. Make sure you're sharing this with all your friends. Make sure everybody knows about it. Make sure you are sharing this around. It is almost football season. I got a special one for you guys today because today we're going to do some film review on my guy right here, George Karloftis. Let's get into it. And I'll just kind of let some of this first play play out a little bit before you guys. But really with Carl Loftus, the name of the game with him is going to be power. And I think this first play, you know, that wide view does that great justice, exactly why you should be paying attention to his power. But I'll even scroll it back a little bit here. And let's take a look. You know, coming off, he's playing the defensive end here. And I'll stop it real quick. Carl Loftus stands six foot four, two 263 pounds. You know, he bench pressed 21 times. At the combine, he had 38 of 38 vertical, 121 broad jump. So that tells us he's a plus athlete, an explosive athlete. And then you take a look at his statistics from the season, you know, his past seasons he's played at Purdue. Not overly overwhelming. 2021, he has four and a half sacks, two forced fumbles, two fumble recoveries, two passes defended. 2020, you know, shortened season, just two sacks. And in 2019, it was his true freshman season. He actually acquired seven and a half sacks, the most of his career up to that point. So the production has not been great. But what is great are his traits and his and his power rush, which I'll show here. This is his number one trait. This is what he does absolutely the best. And you can't really see him because he's off the screen here, but you'll be able to very shortly here. And, you know, he's going to be one-on-one -on -one here against the right tackle. But as you can see, we get into the snap and... He gets off the ball pretty good. You know, he's kind of lined up a little bit wider out here. And you see him initially, he has this big frame. He is a big guy. He's a strong guy. He's a weight room warrior. But then you see he gets into this guy. He has explosion in his hands. He hits the triple extension with his ankles, knees, and hips all locked out. And right now, he's getting ready to put this tackle on his skates. And you'll be able to see just how raw the power is. Not to mention, he's got the pad level battle completely won. The hand leverage battle is over. And then he keeps driving, and now he's just starting to press this guy off. If he wasn't trying to go to the quarterback, he's probably going to drop this tackle on his butt back here. But as you see, he tries to get off. He tries, he's trying, but he just can't quite get to it. But what does this do? This is forcing a quick throw from the quarterback as Karloft is, because if this guy holds on any longer, you know, it's going to be a big issue. Why does this matter, though? You'll say, oh, well, they still got the ball if it's still a completion for positive yards for the other teams. Let's go back and take a look at this real quick from the other angle because as you'll be able to see, what down does that say it was right there? You see the mar the marker. It was fourth down and maybe 10 yards. And this is important because the ball is going to have to come. You want the ball out of the quarterback's hands quick on fourth and long or third and long situations. You see fourth down. They got about 10 yards to go before they're going to get over there. And really, you know, Karloftis does his job. He speeds him up. Because, look, this quarterback is looking downfield. He wants to get it down to one of these guys. He doesn't want to throw the check down to the running back. They get, what, maybe four or five yards on that? They're short. They're well short of the first down. This is because Karloftis speeds him up. It's a one-on-one -on -one block that he was able to completely dominate and win on, and it helped his team get off the field on this crucial down versus Northwestern. Again, explosive hands, explosive power, great triple extension, a tremendous bull rush on this play from Karloftis. From the same game, lined up and kind of, he does this a lot. It's kind of surprising. A guy with his power, you would assume, wouldn't play this upright, but he comes out of the two-point stance a lot, and this time he gets him with a finesse move. You know, this tackle has been getting beaten all day, you know, getting beaten all day with power, bull rushes, long arms, things like that. But what does George go to here? Well, this time he kind of gets down, and look, 
He's going to act like he's winding up for power. He sticks both of his hands out, and look at the tackle. The tackle is already leaning. The tackle is already lunging forward. His hands are wide out apart. He's been getting hit so much. He's, he's just waiting for a collision. He's waiting for contact, as opposed to the tackle over here. This tackle is going to be the best tackle in the draft coming up soon. We'll talk about that farther down the road. But look at his posture compared to this guy's posture. It's not even comparable. You know, this guy's confident in his he can block this guy with one hand as opposed to this tackle is just getting torn up by Carl Loftus all day. But instead of just going to the straight power, you see Carl Loftus hits him with a little bit of a rip move right underneath there, gets around him, tackles, got his hips turned. George has won the edge here. Big hit on the quarterback to finish the play, and it's another big down for North or for Purdue. I think it's funny. He comes out in like these wide stances. I think he's going to be a guy that projects well in the NFL where he can play a tight five, which would put him in on a shade. But I think in certain pass rush packages, we could also see him moved inside to a three eye where I think he will at the NFL level, level be quicker than a lot of the guards. You know, I think he projects better to a three technique or a four eye on pass rush downs in the NFL because he's probably not going to, you know, this tackle is probably not going to play in the NFL. I mean, this guy, he's able to beat him because he's a plus athlete. You know, George is a good athlete around the edge. He has good instinct and good hands. But he's this isn't really his bread and butter, this rush around the edge. It's kind of, you know, he's a little stiff. But it's one of those things that he can work on. You can get more bendable and more athletic and more flexible. And here we go again. He's going to be back out on the edge again here, again in this little stance like this. And this time he goes back to the power. He goes back to the bread and butter. And he doesn't get the play, but he sets his teammate up for the play. And real quick, let's just take a look at this pocket. Let's take a look at how he affects the pocket on this play. His sack numbers aren't great, but he affects plays. Because you see the pocket, okay? The interior has them where they want. You know, left tackle over here. He's getting ready to be in a hand battle. George is getting ready to be pushing it up. But look. He explodes, and when he's exploding into this, he is crushing down the pocket. He's crushing down where this quarterback can go, and you can see it getting tighter and tighter. And what's it do? He noted, you know, the quarterback has to bail. George is knocking this guy in clean into the dirt. But what's it do? This tackle over here doesn't know this, but the defensive end knows exactly what's happening, so he's able to get off, and he makes the play on the quarterback, even though Carl Loftus is the one that creates this play in the first place. And we'll go down to the end zone here. Gets out of his stance. Almost a little hesitation this time. He's getting a little bit better at that as you go down the line on his film. He's kind of switched. He's a little shifty with what he can do with his speed. But then he just goes straight into him. He kind of hits him with that little euro. But it's, you know, it's just to keep him honest. But look, hands already inside. Dropping his hips. Loading his hands. You know, his pad level is going to be better. You're getting ready to see the explosion and you see the explosion, the contact, and he has got this guy locked up. I mean, this is not a good spot for you to be in if you're a tackle because, look, he's got all the momentum pressing into you, closing down the pocket. He knocks the tackle clean on his butt. This is a powerful block, man. And he's knocking back a guy from Notre Dame. You know, Notre Dame is offensive line you, and he is completely just bullying this guy. You see just a straight shot, and they just can't handle the raw power and aggression that Karloftis comes with here, and it's just a big pile back there. I mean, it's not a, you know, if you're an offensive lineman in a film room and this happens to you, you're getting berated. A hundred times out of a hundred, you're getting berated. Not just yell that, berated. And in the defensive line film room, they're going to sit there and watch this all week and laugh at it. I mean, it's not even anything complicated. You know, you see, you know, you hear the era, oh, we. it's the era of the complicated bull rush moves and everyone's got to have a secondary move and everyone's got to have, you know, the Euro cross chop and the jumping jumping flip spin, whatever. You know what George Karloftis said? George Karloftis said, I'm bigger than you, I'm stronger than you, and I'm just going to bully you into the quarterback every play. That's what he did at Purdue. He's going to try to do that in the NFL. And now here he is against pretty good competition, Ohio State, another really good offensive line. This is going to be a rundown clip just because I've only shown his pass rushing. But really, it's a read You know, it's a read here. He does a good job. He surfs it down. He shuffles. And then he sees the give from the quarterback to the running back. You see the quickness. Look at the short area burst on this one because he has to make this play. This is his play to make. You see there's no one else. This guy's got to be responsible for out here slash whenever the quarterback pulls. 
This guy's got to be ready to dart out, but also play in the inside gap. So Karloftis has all the responsibility here to make this read here and be able to figure out who he can stop versus, you know, what's not going to be able to be stopped, makes the read. Look how quickly he gets to the ball. Gets there with a head of steam. You know, it's a, it's a gain. It's positive yards, but it's a minimal gain. It's not much. Really good read. Teams in the NFL don't run a lot of this. You know, maybe your Baltimore's, you'll see the, you know, the Chiefs will see this from San Francisco this year. I wouldn't be surprised if they, they'll see some of it week one against Arizona with Kyler Murray, maybe some with Russell Wilson in Denver. Herbert here and there might pull one. But it's not a too common of a look, but still, it's really good run defense, an excellent tackle. Later in that game, no, different game now, let's take a look at what we got here on this one. And again, oh my goodness. I mean, this is, I mean, this it's something he has to work on. You know, you're not just going to be able to bull rush guys forever. But when you have this much raw, natural power, and here's the thing, mind you, he has not played football for that, you know, an extraordinarily long amount of time. You know, he played in high school and he's played in college. Pretty raw still when he got to college. But when you have this kind of raw power, coaches can work with it. He is just, I mean, he destroys this tackle. You know, obviously he doesn't, you know, they run a blitz. He's he's not the one to get back there. But let's go back and take a look at kind of what is the quarter, why does the quarterback start running this way first? Well, obviously he sees the blitzer coming off the edge. He sees this guy blitzing off the edge. He sees the blitz. But just look at the way Karloftis has this tackle turn. This tackle's got a foot in the air. You can't play the game with a foot in the air like that and expect to be consistent and or successful at all. I mean, my goodness. I mean, it's, he's a power punch. I mean, it's just explosive power. I really like his hands, though. I really like it. Again, you can see the triple extension, the pad level, the big bull rush just comes in he gets he keeps his hands tight and really a lot of tackles in the league you know they'll be like well we want to try to th even college tackles they'll be like oh you come in kind of like that we'll try to chop your hands down and throw you like this guy is this tackle is fully leaned forward trying to stop this bull rush he knows it's coming he knows it's coming fully leaned forward and look he still just gets pressed off his feet are all over the place and I'll be honest, it looks like he's probably going to have to hold. He's kind of redirects him at the last second. All-around good play there from Karloftis to help speed up the pass. Another one versus Notre Dame here. This is going to be the last clip, I swear, with you guys. Just a whew. And there he is setting them up again. We saw just a few plays earlier, if you remember. We saw him completely put this tackle on his butt five or six yards into the backfield with a straight-up bull rush. Just no thrills. Nothing fancy. He goes. He went with a straight up bull rush. Something we didn't really see out of him as an underclassman was the ability to utilize these techniques with these other types of rushes, with these crosses. You know, kind of with some of the Euro stuff. But we're starting to see more and more of it from his game because he comes out, he gets a nice little hand swat down, and he gets the edge. You know, and the, mind you, he has got the edge quick here, and this is a really a pretty good job because the quarterback's doing his best to sell run action. It's really going to be a pass no matter what. But he chops him down, and now the, I mean, th it's a blindside hit. You know, It's not a blindside hit because he's coming from the guy's front side. This quarterback is nowhere near ready to throw this football. And you can see, I mean, he, it's a miracle he was able to get it off there to begin with. But, you know, you go back and take a look at it once it plays out. If Karloftis isn't there, is that a completed pass? You know, it's not a sack. It's not a sack, but look, I mean, look at this hit. The quarterback's going to remember that hit. He's going to be thinking about that one because look at this position he's in right now. He's in midair getting ready to get slammed in the turf by a much physically larger human being. You think he's not going to remember exactly how that feels? I believe he will. You know, the ball's incomplete. It is what it is for him. George Karloftis is so interesting as a prospect for so many reasons. A lot of people, you know, a lot of people dropped off on him because they said he's got the short arms. He's not the most explosive, even though I think he is. his explosion and other guys' explosion are totally different. When you're talking about that kind of stuff, you're talking about like guys who can bend the edge and have explosion out of their stance and speed. He's not that guy. But when you talk about pure power and being able to get into your extension and being able to bench press, that's a completely different type of explosion. You know, it's explosion to acceleration versus explosion to power. Karloftis definitely fits the explosion to power mold as we've seen here. 
time and time again throughout this, you know, throughout this video I'm showing you. What's he got to work on? He's got to develop that second consistent move. You know, these guys in the NFL will snuff him out quickly if all he can bring is the power rush. He already doesn't have the greatest frame ever. I think he's going to project more to being a better inside pass rusher from a four eye or a three technique than the outside, but he will be able to be a plus run stopper as a five technique. I think they're going to move him around. He's going to get a chance to play early, though. You know, the Chiefs don't have a ton of depth at defensive end right now. They have Frank Clark. They're going to have Mike Dana. They're going to have, you know, Josh Kando. And then it's kind of a crapshoot. Tershawn Wharton, maybe Malik Herring. You know, the other they're going to have a lot of bodies out there. He's going to have his chance to compete, though, right away and show exactly what it is that he can do. Now, is he going to be perfect early on? No. I think we really start to see him emerge later down the season. There are a lot of good teams and a lot of good offensive linemen he's going to go against the first five or six weeks of the year. The biggest improvement for him, I think, will be after the bye. I think that's where we're going to see more of who he's going to be moving forward for this team. But, you know, with him, you get a guy who's going to bring the ultimate effort. He is a weight room warrior, as they've said a lot of times. He's always constantly working to develop his body. He's going to be coachable. He's going to give 110% effort on every single play. He's a guy the Chiefs are trying to target, and he's a guy the Chiefs want to go after. He's, you know, he is a big guy now. He has a lot of potential in this league. It's up to Andy Reid, Steve Spagnuolo, and this Chiefs coaching staff to be able to coach him up and figure out just what it is that he does well. A big-time prospect. You know, he's been, you know, he's gone from people saying he's the top defensive end to saying he's not even a first rounder. Chiefs get him at the very back end. It'll be interesting to see how he does moving forward. Guys, everybody, thank you for watching this video. Make sure you go and like and subscribe the, to the page on YouTube. Make sure you're sharing it around with all your friends, all of Chiefs Kingdom. You know, I want everybody being able to watch this and enjoy it and enjoy the film content. I love sharing it with all you guys. Season's right around the corner. I'm going to be headed up to St. Joseph this weekend to be able to watch practice, hopefully get a look at all the rookies, including Mr. Karloftis here. It's going to be a great time. The season is almost here. You know, the off season, you know, the drama and everything, it's going to be coming to an end very shortly. You know, we're going to be looking at a situation here very shortly, you know, as we get into the season where the Chiefs are going to be relying on these rookies. So I'm going to keep trying to pump out some of these videos. But again, remember, like and subscribe to the video. Make sure to share it with everyone you know. Everybody, I appreciate all of you guys. I appreciate all the support for all of the videos. Guys, the season is here. I cannot keep saying that enough. It makes me so excited to see. But as always, everybody.